Council, virtually all of them uh, that have recently been dissolved for Matty infiltration are all to be found, found there. There is virtually no other ca local council anywhere else in the country that's been dissolved for Matty infiltration. If you have a look at the international statistics for, for homicides per 100,000, Italy is one of the safest countries in Europe. Um, so I, I, I think that needs to be said as well. I, I just. Yeah, t two other things on, on the exceptionalism issue. Um, it's never really sort of emphasised, I think, um, what an extraordinary achievement, um, uh, you know, need, need, needs to be um, registered uh, in terms of the functioning of Italian democracy when you think that we're looking at a country which you know, for 40 years had the largest communist party in the West, whose domestic politics were a mirror reflection of the Cold War conflict, was constantly um, under a situation of limited sovereignty because of the intervention of the United States in various you know, sort of, sort of uh, open and, 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 and less open ways, and, you know, uh, managed to survive in a democracy. It's a democracy, I, you know, that sort of strikes me as being sort of fairly large achievement. And I think, finally, um, it, it, the, the, the parallels between the MPs expenses scandal and Tangentopoli are very striking. I mean, there are all kinds of parallels. I mean, in both cases, here you have a scandal which um, really um, discredited an entire political class, um, led to a massive explosion of anti-political attitudes, um, a scandal in which we've seen the same kind of attitudes uh, expressed on the part of the protagonist as we saw expressed uh, by the protagonist of Tangentopoli, which were basically, okay, um, it, 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 this, is, this is very unfortunate, but actually we were um, not breaking any rules, all right? The rules may have been lax, they may have been very lax in terms of the way they they were applied, but, you know, we, we, we weren't breaking any rules, certainly not doing anything illegal, uh, apart from one or two cases, and, you know, the, the similarities with the Tangentopoli, sort of, the kind of things that, you know, Claxi said, the, the, the things that were sort of said in the suicide notes uh, by Maroni were uh, are very similar, which were, you know, okay, uh, yes, it was illegal, but, uh, you know, it, it, this was known about by everybody, everybody did it, so why are you picking on us? Now, that may be difficult to defend in, in, in you know, some kind of absolute or abstract sense, but, but it is understandable, I mean, in the sense that we ourselves can uh, imagine ourselves having the same kind of reaction if we were in their position. Um, and, 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 you know, so I, I, I just think that those things are worth bearing in mind too. And um, I, I agree with what you probably say about the, you know, the sort of stereotypical view of Italy. But one thing about the comparison of Tangentopoli and the recent parliamentary expenses, well, we leave a, the fact that they were mostly reported in Britain I and mean, in the British media, but also that there have been a lot of resignation. Whereas the common criticism of Italy is that it's a political class, you know, it never leads, you know, the stage, and it's, it's there. But anyway, I'll, I'll just leave that one down. Yeah. Okay. I'm a great believer in British exceptionalism. Um, it, it's a country that has been affected more than any other by the financial crisis. While initially we still have a manufacturing sector and the banking system follows very different rules and we haven't been affected to the same extent. But I hear from British politicians that we live in, a, myself as well, I've been here since 1997, in a broken society where uh, children only are only able to drink and, and knife each other. Uh, they are the, uh, you know, um, less happy perhaps among all um, Western European countries. But more importantly, uh, now seriously, to also link up with what Paul so long, and I think this is a very serious point. Uh, this is a country where uh, only 60% of people bother to vote in general elections and about 30% bother to turn up when, when European elections are on. And Italy is still a country where about 80, between 80-85% 80 of people turn up. You could say, well, there was a, it's a political culture, voting was compulsory, 
But if you also look at the extent to which people take part in demonstrations, um, uh, how many people take to the streets uh, when the unions call for a strike, if you look at a series of, of, of uh, data about political participation, uh, I think to a large extent uh, the democratic process works better in Italy than it works in the UK. I think that in the UK there is a very, very serious problem with the democratic system. Uh, the only two parties that ever, ever get any space, uh, even from the public service broadcast, are the Conservatives and Labour. And I would argue, that I don't understand why this happens, it's a you know, long, uh, very well-rooted culture of uh, having a system whereby basically there are only two actors, the third one, well, let's forget about it. And all the others, of course, the Greens, the BNP and all the others don't exist. But I think that, you know, from the point of view of a, a, an external observer, this is a huge uh, problem uh, in the democratic process. Where, 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 when do, do you have a hear about the proposals of, uh, it's not saying, let's say the Lib Dems, that still represents about 23-25% of the population, so it's not really uh, insignificant. To link up with the uh, idea of Berlusconi, I believe that Berlusconi is more the uh, tip of an iceberg. Uh, it's very difficult to say there is nothing um, very anomalous about him, but he is the tip of an iceberg. I mean, in the UK, the whole debate about immigration, uh, asylum seeker in Europe has been uh, led for many years by a couple of tabloids. In Italy, you have somebody who has obviously a very large media power, who don't, uh, doesn't just affect the political system, but has decided to run himself. So, it is the tip uh, of an iceberg, but it, it, it is happening all around, not just Europe, but all around the West. So, to link up also the problem of uh, the political parties are no longer what they were before, they no longer socialize people, the power of the media, the links between media and politics, is a very long issue that would take us hours to discuss. But, to some extent, this is happening in the whole... Uh, of, of the world, and certainly in, in major Western European countries. And the power of uh, media tycoons uh, in the last 20 years is something that needs to be discussed and is something that, that, that is quite worrying. At the same time, the political parties as they were before disappear. Uh, and I think also in Italy there has been uh, a tendency perhaps on the left to go down the path of, of believing the story that nowadays parties must be liquidy, flexible, virtual, non-existent, except that uh, the left was very well rooted at the local level and the left does not control uh, means of communications of the power that Berlusconi has. What are the parties in Europe that have not bought into this uh, uh, idea? Well, for instance, the Lega Nord uh, and, and the People's Party in Switzerland. So, right-wing, radical populist parties that are still uh, telling their activists to go and stick posters on walls 